Hi everyone, my name is Shikin. Welcome back to Ras Aquaculture Bioflog Weekly. Now we are in the second episode. So if you haven't watched the first episode, you can watch it in the link below. To recap on the previous episode, we already discussed what are the benefits of using Bioflog, which are first they can reduce the amount of feed that we are using, and second to save the water, and thirdly they can prevent disease. But we did not really explain how it works. So in this episode, we will explain the concept and theory behind the Bioflog. Before going further into the Bioflog theory, let's first understand what are the mechanisms that are happening inside the Bioflog water. So here I will draw a diagram so that you will be more understand. So we have a shrimp here. And this shrimp, they will produce ammonia that is come from the leftover feed and also their waste product. So this ammonia will live freely inside the bioflock water. Okay, remember that bioflock, they have beneficial microorganism inside the water. So this is the microorganism. Okay, this microorganism for them to function efficiently, we need to supply carbohydrate. So, when we supply enough carbohydrate, this microorganism, they will multiply and trap the ammonia that is present inside the water. So, now the ammonia already trapped into the microorganism cell and this ammonia will be transformed into another form of protein or cell of the shell. So, here the ammonia will be removed. Okay, to summarize, you already culture beneficial microorganism together with your culture animal and this case is the shrimp. So, sometimes the shrimp will eat this beneficial microorganism. So in this case, you will reduce the amount of feeding that you are given to your shrimp and reduce your FCR. In our farm, we have the Bioflot technology together with the clear water rust. So now I'm going to do small experiment and compare with you the difference between Bioflot and clear water. Here is our bioflock tank. So from here, I'm going to take 100 ml of the water. Okay, and then we are going to the rust. Okay, now I have two beaker. One is from the rust water and this one from the bioflock water. And here you can see the difference between the color. The bioflock water, you can see it's more more to brown color. But don't get confused. This water have very low level of ammonia. Okay. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to supply both of the beaker with the similar amount of the feed. Here we have a pellet. So I'm going to put few pieces of the pellet into both beaker and for the bioflock I will add on the carbon supply into the beaker then we see after 12 hours the ammonia level between these two beaker will be different okay now you can see even after 6 hours the food that we are given to both of the beaker already about to dissolve Okay, and the carbon that we give to the bioflock beaker, it's dissolved and has been used by the bacteria. Okay, now we are uh, test the ammonia level using the ammonia test kit. And we can see that the water sample that we take from the rust water, the color is between 1 to 2 ppm. While from the bioflock water, we can see that the level of ammonia is at 0 ppm. So, from this simple experiment, it has been proved 
that the addition of carbohydrate or carbon to the bioflock water will help the bacteria to remove the ammonia. I'm not saying that the bioflock is more superior compared to rust but they have different method of removing or eliminate the ammonia content. For the rust, they have this moving bed bioreactor or we call it as biofilter. This one, they have a media that will promote the growth of bacteria on the surface of the media and this is called as the attached growth. Different from the rust, the bioflock water it consists of bacteria that live freely inside the water. In comparison with the rust, the bacteria will grow on the surface of the media. While in bioflock, the bacteria will grow on each other. And this mechanism known as the suspended growth. When the bacteria has already grown on each other and they will form another bigger clump, this clump will provide an extra fit to the shrimp. And here, that is why you can see the color different between the flock and the rice where the flock has brown color and the rice has clear water. To know how many bacteria we have inside the bioflock water, we need to use Imhoff cone. So, in this water, we need to take 1,000 1, ml of the water but make sure you mix and you take about 0.5 meter from the surface. Okay, this water, you need to let it settle for about one hour to see the change after that. After one hour, this is the suspended solid that you can observe. Here, you can see the suspended flock that is observed at the bottom of the Imhoff cone. Now, we are already at the end of second episode. To recap, in this episode, we already learned the theory behind the bioflock. And second, we already learned the difference between rust water and bioflock water. And third, we already learned how to measure the bacteria by using Imhoff cone. So in the next episode, we will talk about why we choose Waname for the bioflock. Do subscribe our channel so that you will get notification when the next episode is out. We know that there are too much information that we are trying to give to you. So we have already compiled it in an ebook. You can download the ebook at the link provided below. If you have any question, leave your question at the comment section and we will try to answer your question at the end of this series. Thank you for watching.